Hi, I'm Daze and today I will be reviewing Forgotten by Cat Patrick. This is the audiobook version. I just preferred reading it this way and it was in my library. So, let us get on! This is also a standalone book, so if you're looking for one of those and you don't want a series, this one is good. At first, you might think it's a little bit slow and you don't really get it, but it is good. You stick with it and then it gets, oh my god, good. The concept of Forgotten is really interesting. Quite literally, her past is forgotten. She can't remember the past, but she can see into the future. So she remembers the future, but not the past. And as soon as the present day that we're living in now turns into yesterday, she will have forgotten if she hasn't written a note down for herself. So she has a huge collection of these notes that tells her her life and what's happening. So if she chooses not to put something down on the note, then she will not remember it. For instance, let's say she falls in a canal but she doesn't want to remember that so then if someone then goes to her oh isn't it really funny that you fell into a canal she'd just look at them and go sorry what by the way that isn't a spoiler she doesn't fall into a canal the main character is called london now she's obviously a teenager she's in high school so we have a best friend called jamie jamie is sometimes a little bit cutting and rude but that's kind of just her personality then we have all the other people that kind of she mixes with but we don't really get to know much of them but the main plot line of this is between London and Luke so Luke is someone that she can't see in her future but today she loves kind of like oh that that's not good that's definitely not good just to let you know it does say on this on the back no spoilers just to let you know but now for the spoilery section so in this she meets Luke and every single day she wakes up and she can't remember Luke at one point she's in a car she wakes up because she's fallen asleep and is just like oh my god here we are which would be really really freaky imagine that every day you wake up you can't remember anything and then you wake up in a stranger's van in the future she can see people are going to get heartbroken by the people that they want to date now is if she changes it and she makes a slight alteration then it will slightly alterate the future as well so it's like the butterfly effect which is really interesting as well i liked this because i like all the time traveliness yes i am a fan of doctor who I like time travel and whatnot, but this isn't time travel, this is just memory travel. It's hailstoning. This is what is interrupting my video. Thanks. Thanks, England. Thanks for hailstoning on me. Right, when I'm trying to film a video. Jamie's falling for her teacher, which is really weird and gross, and quite frankly, the teacher should know better. A friendship between London and Jamie, it breaks down because Jamie is so intent on having this teacher and doing all these things with him. She, just London just doesn't get it and she doesn't like it and quite frankly I don't get it and I don't like it. London can see into the future so she knows what's going to happen and there's going to be a court. She's trying to stop it so there's several little plots she's putting in place to have to kind of make it all together so that Jamie in the end is safe and that she doesn't have to go through all this torment. Luke and the ears. I don't get the ears. I don't like ears. It's kind of like feet. They're functional things, but they're not exactly very pretty things. Luke seemed really lovely in this, but it really annoyed me when I found out that he'd actually lied. They'd actually met at camp when they were about 11, and then he woke up every day, and then London would wake up and be like, oh, hi, you know, would you like to be my friend? So he thought she had amnesia. Kind of a bit like, oh, Luke, you should have just come out and told her because then you kind of ended up breaking up, and then she purposely forgot you, and then you're annoyed because you lied to her. I think she has the right to make me forget you. Just just for a day, possibly. I'm still not saying that that's exactly mature to just go, no, I'm just gonna forget him. <laughs> Although I think a few people would probably like to forget their ex-boyfriends. There's a main plot line running throughout this that London can see a funeral and she can see people crying and she can see her family and she can see her grandma. So once she's figured out that her grandma's died, the only possible reasoning for this memory is that it has to be in the past. And at that point, she finds a gravestone for Jonas, who is her brother. This is the point when I was like, oh my God, what? So it was really sad because he's only two years old. Her mum explains to her that Jonas was in a car with her in a supermarket and all of a sudden he gets kidnapped. They then find the remains of bones that are meant to be Jonas's a couple years later. He's been kidnapped and they presume he's presumed to be dead and at this point it was just like so weighing on my heart. After Jonas has been kidnapped out of the car, 
her dad drives after him and unfortunately they have a crash. London goes into a coma and she actually dies at the time that her brain resets and her mum never told her this because she thought if she's not going to remember it she could spare her feelings from it so she didn't have to wake up every day and be in pain. Because now she knows about it she does have to read that note every single day but she blames herself because she opened the door to the kidnappers. Because London can't see Luke and her future she obviously presumes that Luke is going to die, that Luke will die and the way he will die is they will find the people that kidnapped her brother and then they will shoot at Luke because they don't want anyone to find out. They, the police start an investigation again because London claims that in the past that she saw a piece of paper on the floor that said a street name on it but she didn't. It was in the future but obviously she can't explain that and say well I actually saw it in the future but you're going to have to believe me. By the way, they get into a search about it and then they figure out that there's actually people watching the certain area there about a pawn shop and they think that the pawn shop isn't quite a pawn shop. This is a pawn as in P-A-N-N by the way, not the other thing. <laughs> it turns out that they have a suspicion that they think it might be an illegal adoption agency and naturally she also has to tell Luke that he dies. But will he die at another point just because that point has been changed? Will it then be like two weeks later kind of thing? So it's all about like complications. You can't just go, oh yeah, I'm going to change that and that'll be fine. There'll be no consequences there. So her brother didn't die, which made me so much more happier. And in the end of the very, very last bit of the book in the epilogue, she says that she remembers in the future that she will have him come to Christmas. I like the way they ended the book though, that it wasn't a massive, you know, reconciliation with Jonah, they just left it, that it was for your own imagination to kind of think of all the things that might then happen in the future. And she finally gets to talk to her dad because she's been looking for her dad all this time. Then she gets to finally have a relationship with him because it's, you know, they have to talk to him, they have to tell him that Jonah is actually possibly alive. And the very last part of this book is her saying, I can change the future. So that's pretty awesome. Complications, but she can save people's lives and change their future. I like the fact that it all comes together, it's all wrapped up, all the, like the little ties at the end are all kind of like put into a bow of, you know, a good end.